we shouldn't have a trial. This is not a trial. This is not a, an act of criminality. These are felony crimes in New York State. No matter who you are, we cannot and will not normalize serious criminal conduct. Welcome back to America Decides, an 11th hour request by former President Donald Trump to delay his hush money trial was rejected by an appellate judge earlier this week. Jury selection is set to begin on Monday. Let's bring in CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman. Ricky, you are on top of so many legal issues, but as we look ahead to former President Donald Trump's criminal trial that is set to begin sometime in the coming weeks, jury selection begins next week. What is on your radar? What are you watching? I think you have to simultaneously watch for how the jurors are selected or perhaps deselected, and I can explain that, and look at the other motions that will continue to be filed by Donald Trump's legal team, even while jury selection is happening. In terms of what kind of jurors does each side want, we can only deal with stereotypes, Bob. What we really have is looking at the defense, which is going to want the usual juror that a prosecution wants, and the prosecution is going to want the usual juror that a defense wants in this stereotypical assessment. When you look at this jury process in New York, how long do you expect it could last? A few days or a few weeks? It should really last to be thorough. It should really last a few weeks. What you are dealing with here, when I say the process is a deselection, because you will get a pool of jurors that at least pass the scrutiny of both sides, and from that pool, once the others are whittled away, then they are long gone. From the pool that remains, they will have to strike jurors. So, or prospective jurors. So, let's say that what the prosecution is looking for are highly educated, highly thoughtful people who will want to go sift through the evidence and understand about business records, understand ultimately about election law. They want the most intelligent jury. The defense, on the other hand, is going to be looking for people who are the quote-unquote kind of people who might be sympathetic to former President Trump. So that's often switched the other way. What we say when we say we're looking for a fair and impartial jury, what we're really looking for are the least partial jurors. Because ultimately, there is no one who is going to enter that courthouse on Monday who doesn't have an opinion about Donald Trump, one way or the other. So they can raise their right hand. They can say that they can cast aside their feelings. They can cast aside their beliefs. They can cast aside everything they've read. And they can be fair and impartial. But what if they're stealth jurors? What if there are people who want to get on this jury in order to vote the other way? What if there are stealth jurors who ultimately want to write a book? This is a difficult sifting process, and the judge is well advised to take a long time with each individual juror in order to try to get to the bottom of what they really believe. This should not happen in a few days. If it does, there's something wrong. Delt Jores, it sounds like a book you could write if you ever had free time to do so. Uh, when you look at this trial, Ricky, former President Trump, you mentioned, might put forward through his lawyers many motions in the coming weeks. Is there any particular motion you're watching for? Yes. Um, I'm watching for not only the filing, but the ultimate, uh, not only for the filing, but for the ultimate review yet again of the motion for a change of venue. And I'm certainly expecting a motion for prejudicial pretrial publicity to get rid of the case. And the only way that that can be done, either one, venue or pretrial publicity, the only way that that could be successful is if 
the jurors themselves who come into the room that you can't find a fair and impartial jury, that the vast majority of those who fill out the questionnaire and come to court say that they either favor Donald Trump or they want to prosecute Donald Trump, that they voted for Donald Trump and they believe in everything he says, or they voted against Donald Trump and they don't believe anything he says. So there comes a point where it is possible to say that the venue is improper. And finally, Ricky, before you go, any reflections on the death of O.J. Simpson as someone who has covered him and that historic murder trial and acquittal uh, for many decades now? I think that um, the O.J. Simpson case cannot be compared realistically to the prosecution of the people of the state of New York versus Donald Trump. There were so many issues in the Simpson case that had to do with the Los Angeles Police Department and its fractured relationship with the black community. And that those, those cultural differences between the police culture and the African American community's culture really left the situation of people being skeptical of the prosecution. In terms of Donald Trump, if you want to make a comparison, <clears throat> Donald Trump has used his bully pulpit, his megaphone, to be able to say that all of these prosecutions are politically motivated. So the question then, by comparison, if there is one, is are there enough people who believe that the Justice Department federally, as well as local DAs, have become part of this weaponization to become part of election interference, to quote Donald Trump, to keep him from winning this new election, not the 2020 election, but the 2024 election. So you can have a lot of biases on both sides, but that is where I would leave that comparison. Ricky Kleeman, as ever, thank you for your analysis and your collegiality. We appreciate it. That's all right. It's a pleasure to be with you.